Hi and welcome back to Positive Prepper. So the video that I'm going to do tonight, um, I'm just going to bring out things that arrows kind of all point to one direction. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what direction that is. Um, although I'm pretty sure that the puzzle pieces will come in focus for you and you will probably have the same thought that I do. Um, there's a movie, um, it's called The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I don't know if you've seen it. And this isn't about what you believe in exorcism and demons. That's not what this is about. I'm referencing it because um, during the exorcism, the girl dies, the priest gets charged with murder, he gets an attorney not supplied by the Vatican, and she uses the defense of is it possible if you believe in in God, then you also have to believe in demons, and so is the is the possession of someone a possibility? Yes. Um, is it possible that um, the priest did everything he could, but Satan and and or the demon just had too much control? Is it a possibility? Yes. In the I don't want to tell you the end of it, just in case you want to see it, but it's a really good movie. The point is that anything is possible. And I want you to keep that in mind when I pull this lens back and talk about a few things that have been going on and see what you think. So the first thing, the advisory panel for FDA has now said that after 17 years on the market, over-the-counter decongestants don't work. So, I know for me, I take NyQuil when I need it. I take uh, Benadryl when I need it. I take Sudafed when I need it, and only when I need it. I'm not a, I'm not a pill taker. Um, but after 17 years on the market, now they're saying that they don't work. Well, I don't know about you, but when I took Sudafed, especially, it worked for me. When I took NyQuil, it worked for me. When I took um, Benadryl, it worked for me. Now they're saying they don't. Now, why would they do this right before the start of the flu season? Could it be that you have to get your 84th election injection and they don't want you taking anything that can help alleviate symptoms, whether it's that or just the common cold, the common flu? Uh, why? Why now? Why this timing? Okay, the next thing is I, I'm assuming you are all aware October 4th, there's going to be a national alert system that's going to be put out across the country. This is going to go out on all devices, TVs, uh, radios, your internet, and your cell phones. Okay, here's what's confusing. When it comes out over things like the radio and the TV, it's only going to be there for a minute. When it comes across your cell phone, it's going to be for 30 minutes, so about a half hour. Okay, this is supposed to happen October 4th at around 1.20 p.m. Uh, Central Time. So if you're in a different time zone, you'll have to figure that out. Uh, but cell phones will be basically in their control for 30 minutes, whereas everything else is only a minute. Okay? So think about the fact that we we all kind of know that if you have a smartphone, uh, they're tracking you, right? They, they, they're listening. Um, in this 30-minute time frame, they can access your chip, so they can control your location, your microphone, your camera, uh, basically, every function of your cell phone. Uh, we know that we've had, especially in the last two years, well, actually longer than that, um, our right to free speech has been under attack. Um, there's an ideology that says that if you speak out your opinion that might go against their narrative, then we're going to figure out a way to shut you down so that you can't speak that opinion 
or those evidence-based facts because they don't fit in with the narrative. Um, so uh, my sister actually brought up that, so when you, when this uh, alert on your cell phone is over, you're actually going to have to hit a button on your phone um, to get back to regular mode of your phone to stop the alert, right? So what if they are going to, at that time, when you have to look at your phone and push the button, they, they're going to take your picture. Okay, so now we're creating a facial recognition database because we have control over your phones, right? What if it's also going to make an AI database? So the people that they don't like, they can say, oh, you know, Miss Positive Prepper, you were over there and you did that and you're under arrest. And it's like, no, I wasn't. Well, yes, you were. Here's your face, you know. Uh, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Now, for me, I am going to shut my phone off. I'm going to shut it off from about 1 o'clock in the afternoon on October 4th until probably about 2.30. I'm just going to, for that hour and a half, I'm going to keep my phone off. Uh, I will be watching TV, however, to see how long it actually lasts on the TV and what is actually broadcast. Okay? This is only the second time that they've tried to do it over cell phones. It was the presidential alert. Uh, I think it was two years ago. But it didn't reach everybody's phone, so they want to try it again. Maybe that's why they're doing the 30 minutes, but I doubt it. Um, I think there's something else going on there. That's, you know, 50 billion phones. Takes a while to upload all that data from everybody's phones, right? So I personally am going to shut my phone off. Uh, you got to make a decision about you. I will have the TV on. So that I can see kind of what's going on. But I would rather not uh, openly allow that. The next thing. Uh, FEMA is doing drills at nuclear power plants for a full-scale disaster. So they're very, basically they're doing simulations of terrorist activities. Uh, these are called plume exercises. P-L-U-M-E. Uh, they've done over 13 of these in the last six months. I believe they have scheduled seven more or something like that to do these exact same things. Um, they're radiological emergency preparedness drills. So it's basically the local, state, and federal agencies uh, practicing how to protect civilians in a 10-mile radius if someone was to take over the plant and for fallout and um, containment. Just because it pops up in my head, how many Chinese nationalists have crossed our southern border in the last two years? Just asking for a friend. Uh, yeah, so that's what they're doing. And we know how that usually goes. When we're practicing something over here, the, it usually happens over here, not that much later. Something to consider. The second thing, they're called black start drills in the military. I think it was Fort Ripley they were going to do one, but it was too hot and they were worried about somebody getting overheated. So they ended up not doing it. But um, they're energy resilience exercises. So basically they're drilling with grid down. And they're amping this up. They're, they're ramping this up. Okay. They want the military to be able to work and function um, in a grid-down situation. Uh, another example of that is the drills that they're doing on the West Coast. They're landing F-35s without GPS. They want to be able to rehearse a war without it. And they're doing it under the um, scenario, if you will, that all of the military bases have been either destroyed or overtaken. And so how can we land these fighter jets and these airplanes, whatever, on uh, interstates or on roads or in fields or what have you 
how can we land, where can we land without GPS, uh, without going to an actual base. And this is a real thing. The, 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 all of this is really happening. So you have October 4th, the alert. You have, uh, you know, the NSA we already know is, is big brother. We have FEMA doing these drills at nuclear power plants called the plume exercises. We have all of these different nationals coming across our southern border that are unaccounted for. We have the Black Start drill. We have the West Coast drills. Now they want to take all the over-the-counter decongestants off right before flu season so that you cannot take care of your own symptoms, whether it's anything, right? Is this all coincidence? I think not. Is it possible that these are all going to accumulate into one something, one event. Um, the other thing that's been happening is it was for, they moved, China moved 40, I think it was 40 warships into the Taiwan Strait, and they are building up their military bases along that border. Um, they have been planning this war for a long time, but even longer, they've been planning war with the United States. Now, because my brain goes there, I want to ask you, um, do you think that uh, Sleepy Joe is going to be able to get woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and be able to um, respond in a way to a, like, let's say that one of our nuclear power plants got hit? right or or terrorists took it over would he be able to wait be woken up at three o'clock in the morning and be able to function cognitively rationally sanely patiently thinking everything through you know it, it, is he going to be able to do that this is why i have said what we and I don't mean we, but I mean we collectively are allowing to happen. And if this is a possibility, and if this is what's being planned, we don't have a prayer with the current leader. We don't. So you need to prepare. Okay, personally, I am going to shut my phone off on October 4th. Personally, I am going to continue preparing for grid down. That has been in just about every video. You need to prepare for it. Um, it doesn't matter from what direction this comes. It's important that you are preparing no matter what. Okay, A grid down is likely in almost every possible scenario. So I just I want you to think about that. I want to end this video on two notes. So the first one, and I, I think I actually did a full video about this, but even with everything the way that it is and with all of these things that I brought up and how close we are to something happening, we always hope for the best. We always hope that we're going to be put on a different trajectory. We prepare for the worst, but we always have hope that our worst fears are not realized. So as you watch videos like mine and other um, channels on whatever platform, remember that you have to keep that balance. You have to keep that awareness and preparedness, but you also have to be living your life in joy and peace and um, you know, following through with your hopes and your dreams and your plans. If you sit in a dark corner and this is all you think about, you're going to go down into a hole that you can't get out of because we're always going to have bad news. We're always going to be on the brink of something. 
you know, after 9-11 happened, a lot of people were really afraid to get out of their homes and, and, you know, go to school or go shopping or go to a park or whatever. We cannot live in that fear. We have to live in the hope that things can be turned around before it's too late. So don't seclude yourself. Stay out there among your family and your friends and, and society and public. And, but also, you know, kind of stay aware. Keep that on your peripheral about what's going on out there. Um, think things through. Keep doing your research, but don't let it consume you. Okay? The second thing that I want to end on is that even in the midst of all this trial and tribulation, God is still pouring out his spirit across the world. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, we have, and this, and I don't mean the tribulation. This isn't the tribulation yet. This is tribulations, trials, devastation, destruction. Uh, you know, the earthquake in Morocco that was just horrible. Um, Obviously, the the fire in Lahaina, um, the I think it was Libya that had that massive flooding and so many hundreds of thousands of people uh, affected by it. And then we have Hurricane Lee that could uh, affect the East Coast. All of these things are terrible, terrible things. But this is where you face that knowing that God sees what's going on and he wants you to call upon him when you're going through those tragedies, okay? He is still pouring out his spirit. He is with you through everything you go through. You have to lean on that. You have to draw in that spirit. You have to build that relationship. And that helps you keep that balance between uh, being aware and prepared and living your life the way that you should be living it uh, in joy and peace. So I just, I wanted to throw that in there because I know it's super important. Um, so after everything that you've heard now, I'd like, if you can, in the comments below, uh, tell me what you think. Is it all just coincidence? Uh, is it possibilities? Are all the arrows pointing in one direction? Uh, thank you for uh, the new subscribers that came on. Thank you to all of you who have been with me for so long. Please hit that thumbs up button because when you do it, it can draw in more people. And I'm not on here to get a million subscribers. That's not why I do this. Um, but people need to be aware of what's going on. And if I help one person, then I'm doing my job. Uh, so please hit that thumbs up, hit the notification bell and the subscribe button. And, uh, as always stay safe, stay aware, and above all, God bless you all.